Welcome back you beautiful people. It's Monday and let's start the week off right. We're doing an eating mess. No, I'm not talking about the current state of the conservative climate. I'm talking about the pudding, strawberries, cream, meringue. Let's get it. Eden, Eden. Eating mess, meringues. Loads and loads and loads of waffle, constantly spoken about meringues. Italian meringue, French meringue, Swiss meringue. Put it in a third at a time, put it in half at a time, put lemon juice in there, put corn flour in there. What do I do? I tell you what you do. You get egg whites, double the amount of sugar, all in together, and then just whisk it for about 10 to 15 minutes, and it's done. So first you crack your eggs. I use the pointy bit of one to the fat bit of the other, and that just makes a tiny little thumb dent. So now I can go in, crack it open, and I'm less likely to break the yolk. I'm going five large eggs for this. To get the yolk out, I use my hands. I don't use two shells. I don't use a plastic bottle. I use my hands. God's gifts. You scoop them in, let the white dribble between your fingers, take it into the other hand, and then place it into your bowl. Nice and gentle. This way you've got maximum control and you protect the yolk. So take your mixer, weigh your egg whites, and then it's double the amount of sugar. All in together, no messing about. Whisk in, turn it on about six or eight, and then you just leave it to do its thing. The sugar is slowly starting to dissolve and they're becoming a meringue. It's as easy as that. <gasps> he stopped it. It's fine. The sugar is in there, the egg whites are in there. Once you put them both in together and start the whisking process, it becomes stable. You don't have to whisk the egg whites on their own, add a third, wait, add a little bit more, wait some more, and then worry about splitting it, worry about the egg whites separating or, or splitting or, or not having that luxurious sort of velvety thing that you're looking for with the good meringue. Turn it off, turn it on. Once the egg whites and the sugar are in there, you're good to go. Now this has been whisking for about 10 minutes. It's stiff. I could continue to whisk this for another 10 minutes and it's not really gonna change much. It's not gonna split, it's not gonna over whisk. It is stable, it is tough, it is not coming out of the bowl. And yeah, it's ready to cook. So take your whisk off, get all your meringue off the whisk. And then I've got a roasting tray here with a non-stick mat on. I'm just gonna bash that out onto the tray. If you don't have a non-stick mat, get yourself some grease proof. That'll work just fine. And then we're just gonna spread that out fairly roughly, two centimeters thick, three centimeters thick. Again, it's fairly rough. The thin bits are gonna go nice and crispy. The thick bits are gonna stay a little bit chewy. Those thick and thin little bits are gonna add a nice bit of texture and different sort of integrities to the dessert. So don't be too precious. Now this meringue could be used for a pavlova also. You could use a piping bag, a nice dollop spoon with a little crescent put in there with the back of it. You can go with it where you want. This goes into a 100 degree oven. Sauce. Strawberry sauce that ripples through the cream and the meringue. I like to add a few raspberries into mine. So we're gonna put them into a blender with some strawberries. Just take the tops off of these. You don't have to cut them up. The blender will do the work for you. A good tablespoon of sugar. I've got a scraped out microwave vanilla pod. That's gonna go straight in. And when we blend this, that sugar is gonna to start to macerate the strawberry. It's gonna to start to intensify the flavor. And then that's what you end up with, just from strawberries, raspberries, sugar, and vanilla. You end up with this stunning strawberry juice flavor liquor. Now that's gonna be mixed through pieces of raspberry, pieces of strawberry, and used as the wet sort of coolie that cuts through and ripples through that cream and meringue. So next, just cut off your strawberries. If they're small like this, I'll go in half. Any bigger, you can go into quarters. Break up your raspberry and get that all into a bowl. You get your family involved in this, get all the kids round, cutting up the strawberries, breaking up the raspberries, doing the washing up. Now this is where you can start adding a little bit of your own flavor. Do you want to use fennel pollen? Do you want to use black pepper? Do you want to use cardamom? Do you want to use any sort of herbs and spice you can think of? Basil, a little bit of mint to lift and put your own twist on this classic English dessert. This is where you add a bit of your own stuff and go with it where you want. With all your berries in that bowl, get a tiny little flicker of sugar just to start to break open and break down the structure of those berries, releasing a little bit more of that juice. You get this stunning vanilla coolie and just pour that all over the top. Give it a mix and that will sit happily in your fridge for about six or seven hours. So do you want to do the meringue the day before? Do you want to do the coolie in the morning? Whip your cream just before you serve, mix, put it into your glasses and go. These are steps you can take whilst you're preparing for your dinner party, preparing for that 
special eating mess on a Saturday or a Sunday or whenever it is. Get these jobs done before and in advance so you're not doing everything at once, making an eaten mess out of your kitchen and you're a step ahead. We've had a little bit of a clean down, about an hour and a half has gone past and our meringue is cooked. How do I know it's cooked? It's hard to do it Dutch. It's a little bit soft on the inside, which I'm okay about. If you want it to be completely crunchy, leave it in there for longer. A little bit less, take it out a little bit less. I've taken this off of the tray and just put it onto a cold surface to cool down. And it looks like this. So what have I got to do now? My coolie is cold and macerated. My meringue is cooked and crunchy, ready to get mixed through that stunning whipped cream. So I get my bowl. Double cream, straight into your bowl. Now, Chantilly cream, whipped cream, I always sweeten with 10% sweetness. So if you've got 600 grams of cream in the bowl, you add 60 grams of sugar. Another scraped vanilla pod, and then we'll whisk. Now, when you're whisking this, you want to take it to soft peaks because when you mix in the coulis, when you mix in the meringue, you'll still be working the fat in the cream. So if you take it all the way and then mix it again with the other ingredients, you could split it. So we want this at soft peaks before we then mix and start to firm it up into that iconic eating mess that we all know and love. Cream whipped and we're at soft peaks just falling off of the whisk. Now we have to act fast because we don't want the double cream to split. I've got a wine glass. You could have cocktail glass, a big bloomer glass, a bowl, however you want to go at it. I think it's nice because you can see the layers. Start off with a good bit of cream in the bottom. So you just spoon that up, dollop that in. On top of the cream we go strawberry, the torn raspberries, the macerated strawberry coulis, and those fresh summer strawberries as well. And the glass will get messy, but don't worry about that too much. After that meringue, beautifully pearl white, chewy, crispy on top, again cream. And at this stage, you can give it a little pat on the bottom and that'll just help those layers sink down slightly. Then we go strawberries again, finish with a nice shard of meringue and a final dollop of cream. So that's eaten mess, classically done, strawberries, raspberries, vanilla, whipped cream, and a stunning, super easy cooked French meringue. Allang y'all.